the $500 in cash? Will it be you? All you have to do, you don't have to lose a pound, you just have to guess which one of us will win. And there's a lot of trash talking going on here, Mr. Marino. Good morning. Good morning. Pull that right, right up, uh, really up there, a little bit up there. Good morning. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting contentious in here. It is crazy. You got the lucky of a glass barrier between Andrew and yourself. Good point, yeah. We don't have anything. I mean, the Common Council's got nothing on us, right? Yeah, he's this morning. Out of you. Yeah. It is well. We've kind of tamed down a little, and it's it's drawn over to he, to here. Yeah, so, you're uh, right. We even professionalized than you guys. Have I am right over. now videotaping <laughs> Andrew, and he's asked me not to. I was going to say, this is like the council. We even got a camera yeah, right like in your face. face. And we're going to put it right in your face. Record everything that you it's, say. It's quite interesting. Careful. All right, so uh, we're going to talk about the uh, the the issue of the uh, the master plan, right? Great. Yes. Yeah. Committee and. Um, you know, it seems like you guys have followed the rules. We're told you followed the rules. Absolutely. Some are saying you have not. But the yeah. bottom line is you have this committee. What are they going to do? I mean, is this master plan going to really accomplish anything? Yeah, well, you hope so. I mean, we put together the committee. We have a 15-member panel that I'm incredibly proud of. I mean, we've got some great people. It, you know, it's a mix of the old uh, committee that formed the actual master plan in the yeah. beginning. Uh, people like Lynn Michelini, Regina Benitozzi, uh, J.K. Hage. And then we got a mix of, of new people, people that have uh, recently come into the community, like James Nori, the dean of the business college at Utica College. Um, people uh, like uh, Steve Cox, he's the head of the planning board for Whitesboro. The qualifications for being on this committee, by the way, are live in or work in the city. They want you to have a vested interest in the city, so you can't just grab somebody from out of town. But uh, you can if they, if they actually actively work in the city. So uh, somebody like Steve Cox is invaluable to this kind of thing. So what we're doing is we put it together because we didn't want it to be a you know a gathering dust on a shelf. Yeah, yeah. Uh, HUD really recognizes the There's fact. A lot of money was spent on this thing. Originally. A lot of money was spent on it, and uh, you know going forward, HUD really does take a look at the fact that you're actually using it and yeah. trying to participate in it. Uh, so what we did was we put this panel together. Uh, we got them together with Brian Thomas of Urban and Economic Development for the city. He'll be the de facto chairman because essentially it's his office that runs the master plan. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I affectionately call this group um, the most highly qualified group of interns that we can have in the city. They're going to really be pursuing any avenues during through the master plan that we may uh, have dropped the ball on. So as we speak, Brian Thomas is going to get together a list of things that we've accomplished through the master plan and things that we haven't yet. And uh, First of all, Andrew, look at taking all these people. They're all picking him. All these people are picking him to win this thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm distracted. No, listen, there's a lot of... Listen, are we putting pain on a rusty chair? No, I don't and, think and so. I'm, and I ask you because sure. we're doing a lot of talk about things are changing, and I do believe things are changing. Right. But ultimately, none of this stuff, and this is the criticism that is out there, and it's, uh, you know, none of this will last if if we don't have the the, the, the the jobs, the higher paying jobs, the nanotech jobs, it all has to happen. And, and I think we have to be careful about saying that uh, you know the, the, this is where, where there's a big change going on. Things are, are really improving. Right. It really can't sustain. Like even if you open a new restaurant or a new pub or something, it ultimately won't be able to sustain uh, a, a business if we don't add the jobs, right? I mean, that stuff has got to happen. I couldn't agree more with that. I, I don't think we're putting paint on a rusty chair uh, to that end, but I do agree that if we don't have a sustainable community here, I mean with jobs and jobs bring people to live we're here. Building, we're building <laughs> for the future here and you have to do that. We are. But I, I think to to wave the victory flag right now is, is might be a little uh, premature. I absolutely couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. You're a hundred percent right. But you know if you look back in history, in just recent history when Griffiths closed, it was a big hit to the community. The whole, you know, from Utica to Rome and all parts in between, we lost a lot of people. The jobs went so the people went. Now we're in the exact opposite position, and we're in a really unique position in that we have what we all believe, and I truly believe that Nano Utica is coming. So we have an influx of jobs possibly on the horizon. So what I believe we're doing, and I think we're doing a decent job right now, we could do more, but we're doing a great job is, is preparing ourselves for those jobs. Right. Now what we want to do with this master plan to kind of tie it all together is we want to make sure that zoning is appropriate in terms of residential, commercial, industrial. We want to make sure that we facilitate these people who do have those jobs that right, we want right. them to move into the city of Utica. We have great neighborhoods. We got Upper East Utica where I represent South Utica, uh, North Utica, there's uh, really great parts in West and Corn Hill. We got to make sure that we keep those places residential so when they do come here, 
that they have somewhere to live that they're comfortable with. Right, and, right. And they're not well, moving to Whitesboro and Hartford. Yeah, you know, I gotta say, you have more room than uh, most places to, to, if you wanted to expand into loft apartments, right? Loft I mean, apartments, think of all downtown. these buildings that could be downtown and what's going on at the HSBC. That's awesome, but those jobs have to follow. Those nanotech jobs are going to have no to follow. No question about it. You don't want to, you know, prepare a room for a party and no one shows up. Right. I understand what yeah. you mean, but that's what we're doing. You know, the landmark building with the Pezzanellas. Couldn't say much uh, more about that place. I mean, it's just yeah, incredible. A rooftop restaurant. It's incredible. Well, he yeah. promised me a steakhouse seafood restaurant, so, I mean, I'm going to okay. keep Francis to his word. So Be nice. He told me it's coming. Uh, but, yeah, he's doing an amazing job. Him and his family are, you know, they're the epitome of Utica. They're, they're the metaphor. For Utica, you know, you got a family trying to work hard to save this community, and and they're doing a great job. But um, you know, again, the master plan really does tie in all this stuff, and it's important that we pay attention to it, and to have a subcommittee do that, you know, for stakeholders and community activists, uh, things like that. I think it's a great thing. And does the plan, like for instance, you go over to uh, West Utica, mm -hmm. um, and there's that. What is that? Square there. It's called a square. Nida Square. Uh, no, in no. West Utica. <clears throat> and there's a behind sign the, up there. It's over, by, it's over by the shoot store. Uh, the, the behind the brewery. What's that called? In Columbia. Columbia Square. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the sign is ready to come down. It just does. It, things don't. It and, and that yeah. area is really rough. You take a look at a, a place like Ventura's restaurant. Mm -hmm. They're surrounded by some rough area, and I understand a lot is changing over in East Utica. The Bosnian population has done a great job, but it's right. still pretty rough. Uh, does the master plan include taking care of those staple businesses? Uh, is it Shaheen's Shoe Store that's yep, over there? Right, yep. Ventura's over on the east side. Right. Are we taking care of them, or are we just going to put uh, put all of our efforts in to closer to Genesee Street and, and taking care of the new businesses? No, the about plan, the old ones. Yeah, the, and see, that's a really, really important thing because I, I understand that you know well, we're cutting ribbons on, on new restaurants. You know, I get calls from. Uh, a place like Tiny's, who's having a really difficult yeah. time sustaining mm -hmm. their business because the arterial project. I mean, they know, and Joanne Drace has been wonderful, and she's, you know, really uh, sticking it out. The food there is fantastic, by the way. But, you know, people like that need to be, they need to be, you know, supported by us as yeah. well as the new business. Bringing people in is great, but we got to make sure that we take care of our own house yeah. while we're doing that. But the master plan does address that. It talks about all points of the city. Um, it talks about uh, theme districts. I put together a theme district act a couple of years ago. And uh, what it says is we're going to support different districts for different types of events, arts right. and culture, entertainment, uh, education, business. Um, and now we've done that, you know. And, and those are the tiny types of things. I don't know if you've seen Griffo, uh, Senator Griffo just came up with an initiative, a new start in New York. Which is really what, he, what we're talking about, is taking care of the existing taking small care of businesses in -house. that we have. I want to bring uh, Mayor Joe Fusco in sure. uh, in Rome. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Good. I, I listen. I got a bit of criticism yesterday uh, from people when I said that I thought uh, maybe what we should be thinking about is a throughway exit. Uh, ultimately, <coughs> if all of this happens, a throughway exit for the for the city of Rome. Why isn't there one there? No. Who would criticize you? That's it. Well, they aren't I'm from. Not. They're not from Rome. <laughs> uh, well, if you look at the map, you know I. I I grew up in this area, and everybody's always heard the same stories. How oh, we got screwed out of our, out of our throughway exit, this, that, and the other thing. But if you look at the map, and you look at the way the throughway runs, the concept of the throughway was to get people from point A in the state to point B as quickly as possible. Right. We're way, we're north of, of, of the throughway. They would have had to loop, I don't know how many extra miles onto the throughway just to reach us to be able to put, just to be able to put an exit there. But if you think about what they have, like for instance in Albany, where you can get off and exit early on coming off the turnpike, which takes you directly to the city of Albany. And that, I mean, there's no reason why that, it may be a trip to get into Rome, it's going to not, not an exit that gets you, gets you right off into Rome, but it, it, just making it easier to get to the city of Rome, especially if the, the drones and, and all of this stuff becomes a, a reality. Well, essentially, they did that with the uh, with the Route 49 project. Right. That's a direct, that's a direct shot. If you're heading east on the uh, throughway, or you're coming back, mm -hmm. heading west, you uh, you know you're you're probably eight to ten minutes outside of Rome on uh, you know on 49 at 65 miles an hour. Going west, you you hit 365, another four lane that uh, you know puts you. I think it's 10 miles. So probably again eight to ten minutes. Uh, jumping on a throughway heading west, yeah. or you can uh, have a you know, uh, 233 to get out in Westmoreland. Uh, again, logistically, I don't know. 
Would it be worth the expense? No, it all depends. Actually, uh, somebody writes in, if they didn't do it when the base was open, they're not going to do it now. I've been driving for, oh God, almost 40 years now, and I, I don't have a problem getting on the throughway in either direction. Right. Andrew, go ahead. So I talked with somebody from this way uh, yesterday, and he had mentioned that in order for that uh, possible throughway to be built in Rome, there'd have to be a lot of federal proposals that you have to go to the federal government to do it, and it's a long, complicated process, and, uh, you know, it would have to be there would have to be a petition filed. Or right, right. Kind of, uh, I, I don't think there's a, there's much of a chance of that happening, but uh, you do wonder why there isn't uh, that opportunity, a straight shot from the throughway over to, uh, over and to Rome. And it didn't happen when the base was there, so it's probably not going to happen now. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they just, logistically, I think we're just too far away. If they had bent the throughway a little bit when they were building it, eh, maybe we could have gotten a little closer. How much was all of that politics back in the day? Oh, that was before my... I wasn't even playing Little League yet. Yeah, well, it was politics. There's no doubt about it. All right, Mayor, thanks for the time. I appreciate it. And, uh, All right, you guys have a good day. Uh, uh, good luck with your weight challenge. We're, uh, you, you know, Andrew's going to win it all. He's got it all worked out, so uh, that's not good for us. So Andrew says, uh, Joe Murdoff, thank you. Uh, anything else you want to add on? No, the guys, plan? thanks very much for coming in. I, you know, uh, I'll come back and I'll, I'll update you on the progress of where we're going and uh, where these guys are going to take us as we go forward. They're going to report to us quarterly. So, you know, anytime you want me back, and we'll, uh, I'll even provide you with the report and we'll see where they're headed. All right, uh, Joe Murdoff.